So over the past few years, we've seen an explosion of static site generators. On the jamstack.org website, there are over 347 static site generators available. And so with so many static site generators available, what makes Astro different from everything else that is out there? So one thing that sets Astro apart is the fact that it is HTML first. On the right hand side is a screenshot of Fred's Twitter profile. And Fred is one of the co-creators of Astro, as well as the self-proclaimed CEO of HTML. So while this is, this is obviously a joke and it's in good fun, it does demonstrate just how serious the guys behind Astro are about being HTML first and about website performance. So what exactly does it mean to be HTML first? So Astro has a zero JavaScript runtime. This means that Astro renders HTML on the server and strips away any remaining unused JavaScript. So essentially, Astro does not ship any JavaScript to the browser by default. So then you may be asking yourself, well, what do I need to do in order to use JavaScript for some kind of interactivity on the page? So this is where the concept of Astro Islands comes in. And it is really critical you understand how Astro Islands work as they are integral to building sites in Astro. So in this example, we have a wireframe, if you will, of a web page. At the top in the green box, we have a header component. And this header component has some JavaScript in it, which is why it, it is colored green. Underneath it, we have a white box that represents some server rendered HTML for things like content, text, images, and things like that. And on the left-hand side is a blue box for a sidebar, and this too has JavaScript, and so does the red box, which represents an image carousel. So in this wireframe, all of the colored boxes represent components that have JavaScript in them, and all the white boxes represent components that do not. So the term Astro Island refers to an interactive UI component that exists on an otherwise static page of HTML. So again, the colored boxes are Astro Islands, since they are interactive elements that require JavaScript, while the white boxes are server-rendered HTML that do not require JavaScript. And Astro Islands, or interactive UI components, are rendered in isolation from one another. So you can think of your application or web page as being split up into an archipelago of various components, some requiring JavaScript and others that do not. And as the developer, you get to pick and choose which components get JavaScript, which means less JavaScript gets shipped down to the browser, which in turn means faster and more performant websites and apps. So Astro also works with a variety of UI frameworks like React, Preact, Svelte, Vue, SolidJS, AlpineJS, or Lit. And so now that we understand what Astro Islands are and how they work, let's take a look at some code and see them in action. So in this example, I have a page called Islands with two components in it. The first component is a header component, and the other component is a hero component. And so if you look closely at each one, you'll notice that they both end in a .jsx file extension. And this is because both of these components are React components. So let's take a look at this page and see what it looks like. In the header component, you'll notice that there are two dropdown arrows next to solutions and more. These are supposed to have dropdown menus in them. However, when I click on them, you'll notice that nothing is happening. This is because Astro does not ship any JavaScript to the browser by default. Remember that Astro has a zero JavaScript runtime, and we can see this in action by opening up the Network tab and then clicking on JavaScript in our DevTools. So when I refresh the page, notice how the only items that show up are coming from the V Dev server. There currently isn't any JavaScript or React that's being shipped to the browser to render our component. So then how do I get these dropdowns to work? By using what are known as client directives provided by Astro. So to get my header components dropdowns to work, I need to add a client directive to the header component like so. This directive tells Astro to load the JavaScript necessary for this component immediately on page load. Now let's take a look at our page and see if our dropdown menus are working. As you can see, our dropdown menus are working because we have told Astro to include the JavaScript necessary for them. Also, if we open up the DevTools and inspect the Network tab again, you will see a whole bunch of JavaScript is being loaded on our page now. There are multiple ways to tell Astro when and how to load the JavaScript necessary for your component. And currently, our header component is getting its JavaScript as soon as the page is loaded. 
However, we can also lazy load it so that the component will get the JavaScript whenever the user scrolls it into view. So for example, let's say you have an interactive component further on down the page. That component will not get any of the JavaScript until the user scrolls down and brings it into view. To demonstrate this, I will move my header component below the hero component. Next, instead of client load, I will add client visible, which tells Astro to only give this component its JavaScript whenever it becomes visible and into view. Now let's see this in action. I'm gonna open up the network tab again so you can see the JavaScript files load once we scroll the header component into view. As you can see, as soon as the header component starts coming into view, Astro loads the JavaScript ne necessary for it. There are several kinds of client directives available and I will link to the docs in the description below. Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe for more videos about Astro and other web development related tutorials.